I saw a shell of Dryden's work being restored. Horrible shape. He had no idea of how to structure a painting and what to do with it. If a buyer, he thought there was a buyer coming, he'd varnish his paintings. He <laughs> so he had all this surface stuff. They were, some of them in horrible shape, beyond restoration. But, but what a incredible American icon. And I love the face. It's a very simplified version of a writer. But I like the idea of this man who almost invented moons in American landscape. And this fact here of Albert Blakewalk, also the great painter of moons. I don't know whether you know about Blakewalk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he was a, a great pioneer in America. He would go out and live with the Indians mm -hmm. in Indian encampments and try to glorify the life of Indians. So, rather heroic. Couldn't sell his work. <laughs> so he would go along the street <clears throat> with a painting and hope somebody would buy it so he'd have dinner. <laughs> he was institutionalized. So here he is against a landscape. And I have another version where he's in front of the institution where he was housed for the rest of his life. Mm. So a tragic story. Yeah. And again, the, 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 what the shore looks like in Maine, always <sighs> off the water, how many trees are going to be left? They had a horrible storm up there. I still don't know what the results of that were in Maine, but always trees gone, so on. Uh, this, I did this kind of a tribute to Maya Shock. Maya, was a war bride. She fell in love with an American GI, came to this country with him. He worked for the Union. And she was enrolled at the Academy. She saw the work of Soutine and painted like Soutine. She, she was a dynamo, a small woman, and these, these heavily encrusted canvases. And one of the faculty said, you're a, a small Japanese woman. And what heritage you have. And why are you painting like Soutine? So she thought about that. And then she stopped painting like Soutine. And she started doing these beautifully limpid Japanese-esque paintings that were as nice as anything you ever seen being done around Toga. She did have a problem that there's a syndrome that some people have when they can't work in cold weather. It just, it dries up. She couldn't do anything in the wintertime. And that gets psychological difficulty. Uh, she opened an art school in Harrisburg. It was quite successful for a number of years. Early death, unfortunately. But I, I just picked up some details from one of her paintings. There, wonderful person. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm too complicated. So a, a little simpler relief. Like to pay homage to people. Uh, love the work of Hokusai. And of course, famous for his Fuji series. So here he is, pointing to Fuji. Saying, I'm going to paint that mountain. The Prince of that Mountain. Okay. Uh, and again, love birds because of, they're free. I don't have any owls I've done because owls have such characters. There's so many different kinds of owls, too. So, and simply cutting separate blocks, putting them together. Uh, here is Amy Clampett. Wonderful poet. She's one of the best poets we've produced. And I have a, a line from one of her poems that I carved into the block. And I, I heard that she was, had summered in Maine. 
and I was hoping to get to meet her. And yet it's, I feel self-conscious about doing somebody's portrait. And I had done a, a portrait of a well-known writer in Maine. And his wife was angry. But she said, I do not give that man permission to do a portrait of my husband. But he can always get into trouble doing these things. So I didn't know what she would think about this. But she'd seen it in the gallery there, so she knew I'd done this. And I was working in the studio one day, racing through the woods with Amy Clapper. <laughs> racing right down through my property toward the shore. And I rushed out and called after her, but she was gone. Mm -hmm. And then her assistant came after <coughs> her, and her assistant said, well, she has to get to the shore. And that was it, so mm -hmm. she was gone. <laughs> but she produced a wonderful poem about the, the bog and these beautiful things that grow, and that bog up there that's unlike any place else. And she, didn't live too many years after that. So again, I, I like to just work with these shapes, change things, uh, intrigued by the landscape in Maine, these trees that are dying that still hang on. So it's, it's about struggle, struggle mm -hmm. of nature and survival. You survive what we are and what people do to us or what life does to us. Mm. And again, insects. Something nice about the delicacy of things. I've always heard, I mean, I've been up in Maine during horrible storms. We just think that the whole ground shakes. And, it, and after the storm, I walked to the shore and there's spider webs still existing that haven't been broken. And a lot of this is overprinting. I print it to sort of an orange color, a russet color underneath and the green on top. So, the idea of transparent printing and then just burnishing by hand. And I try not to be Walt Disney, although you could be pulled in that direction, but I do think these creatures have personalities. Or they, they seem to have. So a lot of the birds I do are imaginary. And I'm a bird myself. <laughs> and I fly now and then. People tell me I can't, not do it. The woodcuts, are they mainly uh, the tiny woods in pine? I, I cut in white pine always. White pine? Yeah. And I don't see any banjo harder wood because I've, I've done big additions of 50 or 60 on pine boards and the boards still in good shape. And pine is easy to, to carve. Oh yeah. Yeah, you don't have to sharpen your tools all the time. This is. Yeah. So just, I just go to the lumber, I go to a Home Depot and they stack the woods verti board, the boards vertically and I go through the stacks and pull out the ones I need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But a lot of this, it's just, like a couple steps a day. So this is overprinted, kind of a, uh, uh, an orange color underneath, and then a kind of uh, putty color on top. And just keep printing until you seem to be satisfied. And then the, the key block is the, the linear part of it. So the bird is on a separate block. You're saying that the bird is on a separate block? Uh, that would be front and back of one block, front and back of another block. So you need four sides. Hmm. So the, the linear part is from the key block. Hmm. 
and then you use that to trace the color blocks. And, and no experience is the same block to, uh, print to print. And I suppose basically what you're trying to do is create some sense of meaning in what you're doing. Uh, uh, I don't like decorative stuff. Nice to look at, but I don't spend my life doing decorations. I, I want to. This is about people as well, and how we look at these creatures. I remember I was bemoaning once to my lawyer about death of creatures, and he said, oh, so what? <laughs> That's a lawyer. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the beauty of knots in wood. Mm -hmm. What? And the nice thing about wood, it, it has a character, and no two boards are the same. Uh, it had, it's the only thing to work on that was once alive. Not true of metal plates or stone. Mm. And then it's, it's, <coughs> it can speak, then you help it speak. It needs a voice, so you do what you need to do to let the wood talk. So it's a strange universe that, from the tiny things to the big things. And we need them both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The knots almost remind me of moons. You have moons in a lot of the work. Yeah. And the knots kind of give that well, feeling it's also. A, it's a nice abstract circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it creates a, a mood. You would need otherwise. And under moonlight, we change. I went to Tahiti, and the natives go out and make love on the beach under moonlight. <laughs> Pretty nice. <laughs> 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 Namaste. I don't know how many prints I've done, maybe 10,000, maybe. And I have them stacked, eight feet tall. My children are gonna hate me when I die. <laughs> <laughs> I read about an artist out in, in Arizona who thought he'd get even with the federal government because they think like the tax you on work you've done. And he, so he had a press conference, took his work out of the desert and burned it. Mm. Yeah. I've heard about composers' wives who had declared bankruptcy when they, uh, their husband's music was valued. Sort of mm. tragic. Mm. And yet we just plug along. <laughs> so then you make your frames, yes? Yeah, I do. Just because it's so, frame is so expensive. Yeah. And I, I generally don't like what framers do anyway to prints, over frame them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is a simple one by two, just rabbit it out. I have a friend who does that for me. Yeah, and I hate that. I hate to mad print, and I hate to frame them, but it's what you do. <laughs> so the colors for your sculptures, they all seem very particular, like there's different color scheme. I mean, how do you work it out? Well, I don't know, just 
try to get a variety since so I'll put six or eight things out in front of me and play one against another. And a lot of these are done over a long period of time. Or very often you, you get tired of working with a certain kind of zone and you want to do something else. And it, it, it's, it just comes some kind of curious inner need that you sometimes can't even explain. Just do it and it happens. It's a mixture of paint and stain? Yeah. I usually start with stain and then never quite enough and then use regular oil paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because some are very matte and then some are kind of a sheen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, if you put three or four layers on, then you get a little more opaque, an opacity. But it's just so nice to, to let something break free. And so much of our frustration is real, is this. Yeah. I've had a rough week, it's been a lousy week. And it's just nice to, I thought Monk had the idea. You walk out on the bridge, you just scream. <laughs> <laughs> and he made great woodcuts. <laughs> oh, he was wonderful. Yes. I've been to Oslo. And the irony there is, he had an outdoor studio. It was just four walls with a partial valence that sheltered a little bit. He put his paintings under the valence and painted all, all, all year out of doors. And when he died, they didn't care. They just left that work out there for months. And then they realized this is an important man. Yeah. So they built a museum to house his work. People come all over the world. And now they're building a bigger museum to house his work. So we are of such little importance during our lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Any other questions for Dan? No, I just I wasn't aware that you did these sculptures, so I'm, I'm glad to see yes. this exhibition. I only know yeah. your works. Well, I guess we all have multiple needs somehow. Yeah. Yeah. And I seen the nice thing about this field is it's an introductory to yourself. And you find things about yourself that you put it in never realized even you're there, or even an issue. And it's, it's no fun facing yourself, always. Not much choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you prefer to work by yourself? Uh, uh, you prefer to work just by yourself? Yeah. yeah. Uh, although I, the nice thing about printmaking, it, it's communal. Okay. So I enjoy teaching in the oh. academy shop because they learn from one another. But I, I have a tough time with other people working in my studio. I just need that solitude. You know. And that's one reason I like Maine too. It's just, it's, it can't be more solitary than you are. <laughs> I'm in the middle of what I've been an island. Can't see anybody. And it's just, I'm the only person in the world. And that's sort of nice. With birds. Yeah, and you, <laughs> you have to live with, live with that. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Dan. Well, thank you. 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 Thank you.